Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing this morning? So this is a little different kind of update. Um, I don't think I posted anything yesterday or the day before. I am just about to cross into New Mexico, and I am happy to report that I survived with my sanity mostly intact my worst travel day thus far. Not just this trip, but ever since I started um, traveling over the road. I was crossing from Weatherford, Texas with the intention of making Roswell, New Mexico yesterday, but unfortunately encountered coming across West Texas um, a sustained crosswind of 25 miles an hour with gusts of up to 35 and I'll tell you what I I couldn't slow down enough I mean it seemed like no matter how much I slowed down dropped down from 60 to 55 to 50 finally hovering right around 48 and that wind was just merciless um, you know on this truck and trailer and when some eyes would go by, I would literally just cringe inside, take a deep breath. A um, couple of times the trailer did develop a fairly decent sway. And when that happens, the only thing that you can do is um, take your foot off the gas, keep it away from the brakes, and just steer until the, you know, and decelerate until the trailer straightens itself out. So after having that a couple of times and realizing it ain't getting any better, I decided maybe I would be better off the highway, um, you know, where there's less truck traffic and um, people aren't as bothered by the fact that I have to go a little slower or a lot slower, depending on the, the situation. Um, so I pulled over and I reconfigured um, Google and I added to the things to avoid, avoid highways. I, I always choose ferries and um, tolls, but I added highways. So it routed me off the highway and that turned out to be the biggest fucking mistake ever. First of all, I had never heard tell of something called a farm to market road, but apparently in West Texas there are farm to market roads and and I don't even know like how to describe it really. Um, what they called a farm to market road 207 was, I mean, I'm sure they considered it two lanes, but it was really more like a, uh, a lane and a half, no shoulders, um, the pavement, you know, broken away in some places. So I was constantly watching the trailer wheels in the back of the, uh, you know, in my mirrors to make sure that I wasn't dropping off into the, the, um, you know, off the, that broken asphalt and oh my gosh, it was so freaking stressful. And then it routed me on to some other obscure road, which at least was a little bit wider. Um, however, that being said, the wind was just horrible. It was miles and miles, and we're talking hundreds of miles of, of just open prairie with nothing to stop the wind at all. And the wind increased, and then I kept coming up to signs, you know, that said, um, caution, wind gust area. And I'm like, wind gust? Wind gust? The hell? How much, how much faster does the wind need to blow than it is? Oh my God, I thought it was gonna. <laughs> At one point I was like, that's it, I'm just gonna pull over and guys, we're just gonna sit here and die. That's it, that's it. I've had it, can't do this anymore. You wanna talk about white knuckle driving? Good God, it was, it was just horrible. There's a guy behind me right now who's real pissed off. I'm on another one of those obscure little roads and speed limit is 75 and I'm doing 58 and it's a no passing zone and I'm sure he's probably chewing on the inside of his cheek saying horrible things about me but it is what it is um, again nothing but open prairie where I am but 
there is not a sustained wind today. So, really thankful for that. Um, dude, I don't know what you want me to do about it. I didn't make this road. You know how they like swerve out, can I pass, can I pass, can I pass? Well, you could if you wanted to, but there's a semi coming in the other direction, so it's not necessarily what I would do. But you do you, boo. There you go. Now he's finally going to pass. I'm going to pull over and give him a little extra room. There you go, boss. Have a nice day. Anyway, a trip that should have taken me five hours took me seven and a half hours and I never did make it out of Texas. Um, I made it as far as Lubbock, a place I never in my entire life wanted to visit. Lubbock, Texas. Whatever. But I found a Love's truck stop and tell you what, I was never so thankful to be off the road, to pull in there and um, get things set up to spend the night. It was such a relief and like Every muscle and bone in my body was tense. The good news is, as difficult as it was, I handled it. Um, you know, I, I, um, I don't want to do it again anytime soon, for sure. Uh, at one point, you know, when things were really bad, I was literally creeping along at 45 miles an hour. Um, I was like, what the hell am I doing out here? I mean, what? What exactly am I doing? And I was really beating myself up. Putting myself in harm's way. Putting the dogs in harm's way. Um, and I answered the question, what in the hell am I doing? I'm living my dream. I'm proving to myself what I'm made of and what I'm capable of. And I'm releasing years and years and years of trauma and lies that I've told myself about myself. So, yeah. Anyway, that was yesterday. Slept like a baby last night, let me tell you. And get up this morning, it's a new day. Sun is shining. It is 63 degrees. I will be at the New Mexico border in just about a half hour. I really like New Mexico. Um, I'm making a stop at the, I think I told you this before, I'm going to the International UFO, um, what are they, International UFO, um, Research Center and Museum in Roswell. So if you never hear from me again, we've probably all been abducted by aliens. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really excited. And then after I, I visit Roswell, I mean, by the time I get done there, it'll probably be, um, you know, well, let's see, 10.57 here now. Oh, but I forget. Once I cross into um, New Mexico, I'll change time zones again. So right now I'm in the central time zone, but once I cross into New Mexico, I will be in the um, Mountain Standard. Um, time zone, so that'll be an extra hour. Fucks me all up. I can't. I can't keep track of it. And like the electronics on my car, are like, do you want to change the clock? You know what? Do it. Do whatever you want. Does it really matter what time it is? Not to me. Um, Roswell, 124 miles. Yes. Um, anyway, that was yesterday. Today is a new day. Um, my courage and my confidence has been restored. And it's a beautiful day for travel and I'm really, really, really grateful. The other thing that I wanted to talk to you about today was like the technical aspects because I get people commenting, not just, you know, on my post here, but also on YouTube. And, and again, if you haven't gone to my YouTube channel and subscribe, please do. Um, it would mean so much to me. Anyway, people are like, oh, it must be so nice to just, you know, pull off the road and climb in your climb in your trailer and, you know, cook yourself a meal and settle down for the night. And I'm like, well, it is once I get to that point. So for those of you who have never trailered, and especially those of you who have never trailered 
and boondocked or dry camped a lot, in other words, without any hookups, no electricity, no water, anything like that. Um, it's not quite that simple, especially when you're traveling with critters. Because I'm going to turn the camera around for just a second just to show you just how barren it is here and why the wind will too. Like, look at that. Look. Isn't that crazy? That's cotton fields over there, by the way. I stopped yesterday and I picked me some cotton because it's something I always wanted to do. But anyway, both sides of the road. There's just nothing for miles. So when the wind blows, there is nothing to impede it for sure. Anyway, whoops, back over here. Um, so it, it isn't that simple. Um, so I'll give you a breakdown of what it's like. It actually takes me about a half hour to 45 minutes um, before I'm at the point where I can get in a trailer for the night, cook some supper, feed the dogs, all of that fun stuff. Ooh, there's a great big old truckload of cotton right in front of me. It's not a semi. I don't think it's a semi. Um, it's a straight truck. And he's dropping little balls of cotton all over the road. Ordinarily, I would be irritated at a truck, you know, dispewing its load all over the highway. But I'm sorry, there's just something kind of cute about a big old truck <laughs> leaving cotton balls all over the road. You go, dude. Anyway, so, um, go on, go ahead and pass. Um, when I first arrive and get off the, um, get off the road, I have to find a suitable parking space at Loves or Walmart or wherever I happen to be boondocking for the night. <clears throat> and one of the first things that I do is leave the dogs in the truck, get out, um, put the stairs down to the trailer, and go and get my my bubble level, put it on the counter, and, and check the um, trailer for level because not only is it uncomfortable to walk around inside the trailer um, when it's not, you know, at least pretty darn level, um, it's not good for the refrigerator to be off level for hours and hours and hours. So that's step number one. If I have to make adjustments, I do back up, pull forward, find a different spot, um, check the level again. Once I'm satisfied that we're level and it's a good spot and there's adequate room for the stairs to come down and the slide to go out without my being in anybody else's way, um, then I turn the truck off. Once I turn the truck off, I get Bella and Casper, put their leashes on, and I let them out to go pee or whatever they need to do because chances are it's been hours since they've had an opportunity to do so. And once they've done their business, then I put them in the trailer put the stairs down, put them in the trailer, um, and shut the door. And then I, um, as long as it's not going to throw it off level, I, um, put the tongue jack down on the trailer to take the weight off the rear end of the truck for the night. Cause poor thing has to carry this weight, you know, all the time. It deserves a break too. Um, and then having done that, I move the things that need to be out of the trailer, I mean out of the truck and into the trailer um, for the night. My purse, my firearm, um, uh, you know, if I bought coffee or, or a drink that I'm still working on. Oh, they're painting lines in front of me. Don't you get any of that white paint on me. You just keep it up. Get out of the way. Hold on. I got to navigate around these guys. Um, move all of that stuff in to the trailer and then I move the bird into the trailer and get him hung on his little hanger, his cage on his little hanger. Um, and then after everything's on, oh, I have to grab um, Casper's travel crate because that's what he sleeps in as well. Once I've moved everything out of the, the truck, um, then I unplug the seven pin connection between the truck and the trailer because if you don't, the um, 
the trailer, the, the truck actually trickle charges the trailer's battery all night long, and too much of that, you could wake up with a dead tow vehicle battery in the morning, so I have to remember to do that. And then I get the, um, oh, and the other thing, when I first pull in, if it's a Loves, um, I gas up at night because I'd rather gas up at night than have to do it in the morning. Um, and if the gas can that I carry gas for the generator needs gas, I gas that up too. And then pulling to my spot, blah, blah, blah. Um, so then once all the animals are in, all of my belongings that need to go in the trailer for the night are in, I go ahead and lock up the truck. Um, and then I get the generator out of the bed of the truck, make sure it's got enough gas to run for at least eight hours. And I set up the generator, which, hold on. I set up the generator and I cable lock it to the trailer stairs because, well, it wasn't cheap and I'd hate to see it walk off during the middle of the night. Um, and then, and then, I go into the trailer, get the dogs fed, make sure the bird has water. Um, if it's cold, I start up the propane heater um, inside the trailer. Um, I think I already said put the slide out. It's one of the first things I do to make sure that I've got enough room and I'm not bothering anybody else. Um, and then I have to um, put the everything back in order you know, in living mode because everything has to be stowed in such a way that while it's going down the road, it won't go flying through the trailer or fall down or things get broken or whatever. So I have to reorganize everything. So now it's, you know, in, in parked position. Um, like I said, set up the propane heater. Once all of that is done, then I can be in for the night. And then in the morning, um, I get to do the whole thing in reverse. So, <clears throat> yes, it is wonderful to have um, a house on... Oh, there goes another truckload of cotton. I don't know why I'm so amazed with this whole cotton thing. First of all, I love cotton as a fiber. Um, my favorite clothing is made out of cotton. I much prefer natural fibers to, um, you know, synthetic fibers. But... I'm just surrounded on both sides by fields and fields of cotton and all these little trucks going down the road carrying huge truckloads of cotton. I love it. A little cotton ball, cotton ball, cotton ball. Oh, I think another one is coming up behind me. I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to let you see it. It is. It is. Look at that. Look at that. And it's a look. See it. <laughs> cotton balls everywhere. So there's two trucks. Whoa. Look at all that. Seems like such a waste to me, right? Those little plants spent all that time growing those beautiful little cotton balls, and here they are just blowing all over the highway. Anyway, um, and there you go. Now you can see, say that you've seen an actual load of raw cotton. Um, so then in the morning, everything is done in reverse. Um, and I won't go through all the steps again. So you can see why it takes, you know, about 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the weather that I'm battling. If it's cold, it slows me down a lot um, because my hands get so cold trying to trying to work with everything. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much the routine. Now that differs from pulling into a place that you're going to be for, even if it's just three or four days um, with full hookups. Um, then the process is different. You know, you get to plug into their... Oh, look, we have bales of hay in Vermont. Hold on, let me... There. Bales of cotton. Look at them. I saw them before. Uh-oh, oh, that one lost its coating. Stop driving you crazy with my cotton fascination. But anyway, just things that, you know, we don't get to see in our part of the country. That's providing, if you're following me, you live in my part of the country in, in Vermont. For those of you who live, you know west of the Mississippi. You're probably not as enthralled as I am. But anyway, at a full hookups campsite, you know, um, hook up to your electricity, hook up to their water supply, um, 
hook up your um, your dump hoses into the sewer line, and you're pretty much good to go. You know, and then just unplug everything and, and be on your way. But boondocking is a different animal because you are completely dependent only on um, your resources, your water, electricity that you can create and provide, and things like that. So, even though, yes, you are traveling down the road in your house and you can stop and sleep or use a clean restroom anytime you want, there's, you know, there's work involved to it. Um, I am amazed at the things that I have learned to do that I didn't know how to do before this trip. The equipment that I have learned to use, the numbers and metrics that would have meant nothing to me last year, I totally get it now. You want to talk tongue weight, trailer weight, weight distribution? I'm on it. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, every thousand miles, um, about every thousand miles, I have to, as part of my morning routine, um, check the, the lug nuts on the trailer because they have to be torqued to um, exactly 100 pounds. So, you know, with all the, the bumping and bouncing and everything else, um, about every thousand miles, it's recommended that you um, check the torque on the wheels and retorque them if necessary. So I do that. And again, that's something I never would have known how to do last year or how to operate a torque wrench. Um, so I'm really excited about the new skill sets that I've acquired. The other thing is, um, before I started out on this trip, and actually before I started traveling and doing a lot more camping and on the road, I was kind of settling into the, um, oh, well, I'm getting older, and I guess this is what happens when you get older, as far as my body is concerned. And folks, I want to tell you that, that since I have had to be completely self-reliant and independent and there is a considerable amount of work in everything that I do, I am so much stronger than I was, say, six months ago. I'm, I'm stronger, um, have very few back pains, um, other, other bodily aches and pains that have been a persistent pain for a couple of years now are either gone or all but gone. Um, so it's been, it's been pretty amazing to me that for me at least when you, you know, forced into a position where you have to use your muscles and your joints and your bones and work, um, they, they get stronger. So there's that as a benefit as well. I mean, so many, so many benefits. I mean, cotton balls, geez, and cotton plants. Here, let's see if I can reach this without. See, here's some of the cotton that I picked yesterday. I have, I have my dashboard covered with, with cotton. You see the little remnants of the plant sticking to it there. Um, I'll have a whole new appreciation now every time I buy a cotton garment or cotton towel or something like that. Anyway, I'm droning on and on. Um, I have another video that I need to make about encouraging and offering encouragement to live your dreams. But this one is long, and so that's that's for another day. Um, I'll post pictures later on tonight um, of Roswell and beautiful New Mexico. Until then, um, you guys have great day and I want to encourage you to as I do all the time to pursue your bliss and follow your dreams and as much as you want to desire to that you um, stop trotting along the path that other people have created that you're expected to walk and start carving out your own path this world. One that brings you joy. One that brings you happiness. One that makes you fulfilled and makes you feel like your life is truly worth living. Anyway, that's it. 
I love you all. Thanks for following along with me. It means a lot to me to have your company. And um, go buy yourself a 100% cotton t-shirt today. Or sheets. <laughs>